Hello and welcome back to Rage Gaming and soon enough Dragon's Dogma 2. In preparation for the release, we're creating videos dedicated to the vocations of the game, the classes that you'll be playing. In today's video, I'm talking archers though, of which there are two unique vocations tied to this concept in DD2. Awkwardly named, there's the archer and then we have the other magic archer. Why would you pick one over the other? Well they're actually serving different purposes. The regular archer is a starting vocation which means it's one of the four you can choose to play right from the start of the game. However magic archer is a hybrid vocation. It can't be used by pawns, it's a risen only and it also means you won't have access to it right away. You'll need to find the magic archer master to form a positive relationship with them so they'll teach you the vocation. Now despite all of that it doesn't mean that regular archer is simply worse than magic archer, not at all. The regular archer is able to provide huge amounts of DPS and consistent DPS at that through its agile, fast paced style and ability to punish weak spots constantly. On the other hand, a magic archer is able to provide solutions to most problems, drawing on a variety of elements, physical attacks and supportive abilities for the team. They are very distinct from one another. As a heads up, I've literally played Magic Archer though. I was invited to an event held by Capcom where I could play the game early for a few hours. I was able to capture my own footage and use up to 20 minutes of that total for different videos. So we got two videos on the channel right now from that experience using that footage, but I'm not allowed to show any of it in this video, but I will be talking from experience, at least on the Magic Archer. First though, let's really hone in on the new starting vocation, Archer, which you might formally be aware of as, say, the Strider or Ranger. This brings the Archer concept into one singular class you can play from the beginning, and this version is awesome. While the official description is about fighting at long range with bow and arrows, the reality of the gameplay is a bit different. You are able to be up in the thick of it thanks to your hyper-mobile smooth movement that allows for moving and attacking at the same time. We see many examples of the Archer leaping and shooting, sliding and shooting, incredibly running up to an enemy, kicking it, bouncing off it, and then shooting while it's falling back down. Naturally though, the larger and intense attacks will make use of different techniques, from charged shots to modified arrows to deal explosive damage, poison or other status, and carefully aimed weak point punishers. Let's go for all the different techniques and skills we caught from the footage. For one, we have the steady shot effect, which just causes the archer to aim carefully and fire further and hit harder. This will be combined with many different types of shots, such as the dire shot, which seems to be a stronger version of that concept. There's this great clip of when we see a minotaur charging the archer only to be stopped dead in its tracks by the raw power of that single shot. So a combination of say aiming with steady shot and firing off a dire shot may have been that example, if not like a more limited special attack. But it does show the raw power of the archer in one moment. We go on to see a mix of other techniques though. Classics like a barrage style unload of many arrows at once, or the sweep shot, which fires a bunch of arrows in a smaller arc. I guess the idea is a smaller, quick AoE option for weaker foes in a pack, like wolves or something, while barrage is more single Single target focus burst and it seems you can perform these techniques while moving to keep that mobility flowing which is great though I do wonder if there's any passive benefits as an archer to stand still to fire shots if they're like stronger or anything like that. Now on top of the technique style firing there's arrow based increases like firing off an exploding arrow that sticks to the target which then is triggered on a follow up hit for a nice explosion. There is this status or poison looking shot applying some sort of debuff potentially dealing damage over time and I imagine there's going to be a bunch of different kinds of status effects we can get by modifying our arrows. One interesting example was during the fight against these fire enemies, where the archer uses a kick to back up, but appears to plant an arrow in the target at the same time they do that. It looked like it was a water arrow type, clearly well used against fire enemies, so it seems like there's even more value in the kicks than just repositioning. A quick plant of a special arrow that the enemy's weak to, and shooting it while you're flying away, seems really effective. To me though, the simple ability to apply pressure by aiming and firing from range is just a majorly helpful thing. Aerial enemies that can be out of the reach of some of the party, you can punish them and bring them down by just aiming and shooting. Or against any normal enemy, you can work out where the weak spot is and constantly apply pressure to it, enhancing that by using the different techniques or tools available. So while this archer can make a lot of impact by aiming and unleashing the strong attacks, I do love that this version is so mobile and able to deal with enemies that are up in their face in really slick ways. But that covers a lot of what we've seen for the skills. We do know a little bit about their augments. Archer will provide endurance to increase your max stamina, avidity to allow for faster climbing of cliffs and enemies climbing and lethality to increase damage when tagging enemy weak points. Those are really good passives to unlock whatever vocation you're going to play. But besides those few augments we do know and the different skills, I imagine there's going to be a lot more in the full game. But now let's talk Magic Archer, which I can give my personal account 
of having played it. The Magic Archer is a hybrid, as I mentioned, so Arisen only, and I'd describe it as the vocation with an answer to every problem. Incredible at dealing with any situation, so let me give you some examples of my experience. I was fighting a Rock Golem, which was extremely resistant to my different element attacks, but very weak to raw physical ones by targeting its litter weak points. By charging this ice shot, I could generate a physical projectile in the form of a big ice block that actually had drop weight, so I had to aim it in an arc and have it land on the Rock Golem's joints, causing it to stumble and crumble. On the other hand, I fought a classic Griffin. I killed that in record time, according to Zade, the guy who ran the session for me. And I did that very simply by aiming at the Griffin's wings, which brought it down. Then, while it was stunned on the ground, I ran directly up against the head and fired off multiple explosive fire arrows over and over, dealing ridiculous damage. Another example would be when my allies are hurt. I could just choose to heal them by popping a healing arrow and shooting them, or fully charging that arrow type to instantly revive them if they're down from range, which is busted. So let's do a rundown of the mechanics that I actually used and learned. Firstly, the R1 ability to zoom in and kind of aim, called the rivet shot. This brings up a circle for auto-locking arrows on a target. You place the circle on a target and hold it there. The longer it's on the target, the more arrows begin to kind of pop up, auto-lock, to home in on the target when you shoot. It also reveals different parts of the enemy that you can deal damage to, so exposing the different hitboxes to see what you can and can't deal damage to, to see what kind of weaknesses it has. You can also change this auto lock effect by using your heavy called conversion. Conversion will make the circle larger or smaller, depending on whether you want to spread the arrows out to maybe AOE multiple targets at once, or focus in on one target, or even weak spots specifically. Compared to heavy, we have the light attack, which is just quick fire. It would lose a single shot that's pretty weak, but but, you know, useful for an enemy that's a bit too close for comfort. Very noticeably compared to a regular archer, this is way slower to fire off, and especially firing while you move, you are very slow. So there is a trade-off in exchange for your magic abilities, you are nowhere near as agile. So running through the different weapon skills that I used then, I used the Frost Seeker Bolt, which will turn my next shots into magic ice, causing a frost buildup that would slow or even stun targets, leaving them exposed. Keep in mind with shots like this, I can fire off a load of them in one go if I'm aiming at a target get long enough to set up a lot of homing arrows of that type, so the frost buildup could be immense. Further, I also noticed that my bow would have a lasting frost buff effect when I used that, so the follow-up basic arrows would maintain that frost effect for a while. I'm not sure if that was specifically this ability, or it's just any elements you use, but pretty awesome. I also used an incredible ability messing with the physics of the game, called Ricochet Seeker. This purple arrow barrage would require some charging up, but when loosed, you channel out a burst of arrows that had some serious recoil you had to control. The arrows would then go on to exist for a while by bouncing off of things, dealing many ticks of damage. Do this in a cave environment and the arrows would bounce like crazy, killing anything because the amount of bounces you'd see. The potential of that then in tighter environments can't be understated. Another very potent arrow type was definitely the Flame Fang Arrow, which fired off one explosive fire arrow with great damage. You would be in direct control of its flight path by controlling the arrow yourself as it flies slowly through the air. Or you could press R2 during that flight to let it go off on its own in whatever path it was left going in. That's how I killed the Griffin really quick. I'd fire that off at point blank, press R2 to get back to my character, and then fire another one straight away. After that, we have the Remedy Arrow, which is the healing option. If you tap fire these, you give allies a nice little heal if it hits them, but if you fully charge them, that's how you'd revive an ally, even from ranged. Two other weapon skills I used were, say, the Candescent Orb, which was a large radius fire effect that lasted a little while. Interestingly, you could attach it to a wall or even a target, dealing low fire damage near to the orb. The other one was the Hailstone Bolt that I mentioned, the charging up ice projectile, a physical object that worked great for slapping enemies with a blunt hit. You could use it to knock enemies off cliffs, or like I said, break the golem to pieces. More of a physical blow. And while those were the few that I used, we know there's going to be more. From the Magic Archer trailer, we saw this crazy super attack that destroys this griffin all on its own, but apparently it costs some of your health bar capacity to use, only restored when you rest at a camp or otherwise. So a pretty hefty limit, but with how strong that ability looks, it makes sense. I expect more kind of techniques and skills in the game at launch though. And in terms of augments, we don't know a lot about the Magic Archer options. We just know that it offers at least sustainment, which improves the physical and magical defense of the pawns, and veracity, which recovers a small amount of stamina when landing killing blows. That is really important for most classes, but especially with how Magic Archer drains so much stamina as you spam fire off these potent magic arrows. 
But that brings us to the end of the video and this overview. In conclusion, the Archer is hypermobile with great ability to punish weak spots and by bringing offensive utility options to the team. You can completely hold your own as an Archer, even when pressured up close, it is just a raw power to have in the party. While on the other hand, the Magic Archer is much less mobile, but with a much greater array of utility options from offensive to defensive to helpful supportive stuff. Using any element that might prove useful in any specific fight, knowing what the enemy is weak to is great for this specific vocation. But in exchange for that utility and magic potential, you are significantly slower and more exposed as an archer. You will really depend on the pawns and positioning while also paying attention to your heavy stamina drain that your abilities will have. So to me, they both have their pros and cons, and hopefully this overview can let you see the value in one or the other. For now though, I've been Hollow, you've been you, thanks for watching. Josh, Cotton, and Hollow with the videos, dropping the humor like a hammer on your tippy toes, bringing entertainment on a daily arrangement to take our insanity and turn it into entertainment. Yes, I said entertainment twice, to reiterate that it is nice, to look into your faces on a mostly daily basis when you let us in your homes to make the whole world a stage, is, uh, goodbye.